Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and it's nice to be back. We, uh, and JJ is actually here with me today. Hi, everyone. Yes, it's nice, to, it's nice to be back here in Phoenix. It's nice to be back on Draw With Me, and uh, it's nice to see all of you. JJ, how, how's, how's Twiggy? She seems a little tired today. <laughs> she keeps trying to rest right on the shoulder that has the microphone. So if y'all hear some snoring, some snortling, some heavy breathing. She had a rough time hug. because she was very, she was staying with her cousin. She had to play a huge amount and uh, just, she's tuckered out now. But isn't Still she cute? She is isn't cute. she just the cutest little thing? She is cute. So it's November. And uh, November 3rd today, and we are starting to feel autumn here in Phoenix. Which it's is, raining. Yeah, it's kind of weird. But um, yeah, it's nice. Here's Sadeep Mukherjee is joining us from India. It's very oh, nice fantastic. to see you. Love that. And uh, yes, and Jacqueline Sanagiotto from Brazil. It's very nice to see people from all over the world coming and drawing together. Hey, uh, a, a regular viewer, Jace, birthday tomorrow. How about that? Jace in Seattle. Happy yes. Happy birthday. Yes, congratulations. Jace. Caroline from Chile and uh, Laura from New Mexico on our new phone. Awesome. Congratulations. So good. So we have a lot to get through today. I don't know. I find like we're just incapable of going on vacations properly. <laughs> And we find that, I don't know, for me, it's like I go on vacation and immediately I come back and think of all the things that I didn't do because I was on vacation. And we were gone for, what did we miss? A day, Literally, we were a gone, day and a half of work. Well, and a weekend, which to be honest, we usually work on the weekend. So yeah. we took four days off of work. It's kind of we unheard did. of. So, Everybody's going to chime in and be like, y'all need to take more time off. But yeah, well, we don't. We don't. And we're not very good at it, particularly when we do. But we did have fun. Colorado yes. is beautiful. We were in Colorado, yes. Aspen trees were turning beautiful colors. It was great. Sketchbook School friends invited us to tour the Mancos Common Press, which is one of the coolest things we've seen in ages, a letter press from the turn of the century. The turn of the last century. Yeah, it's still in operation. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, and um, we also, I don't know, it was just being in nature seeing the aspen trees turning gold and shimmering snow in the breeze. on the mountain tops snow we actually put our hands i put my hand into snow um and you know it's just something about going away and coming back it makes you appreciate what you have even better so that's it's true very nice nothing like sleeping in your own bed that's true. after having we were sleeping in sleeping a in a platform. loft that you have to reach by going up a steep ladder there's nothing not like, stairs a ladder there's nothing like beginning the day taking your life in your hands. It was rustic. It was yeah. rustic. <sighs> okay, well, um, let us let me get on to a bunch of things I want to tell you about, and then we'll start to do some drawing. So I wanted to mention, first of all, our podcast, which I think, I don't know, I don't know how you feel about it, JJ, but it is, I think, firing on more and more cylinders. And each week we have just really interesting guests. And this week was Beth Tremblay, who has just put out a book about her experience. It's not a book. It's a graphic memoir about her experience with trauma and success um, experiences. And it's really a really interesting book. We had a great conversation about how art can help us to heal. And every week we've been doing this. This was a great episode. Um, I mean, Beth is so smart, but you didn't mention the most important thing. Which is? She's been... In sketchbook school since the beginning. Correct. She, so we feel a sense of great pride that her accomplishment has come to life. That's true. We're taking full credit We're for it. We're taking credit. Yes. That's uh, what we'll do. She, was, she came and spoke to the folks at Spark a couple of days ago, and uh, it was just, I don't know, it was just yeah, really cool awesome. for her to explain how she went from not being able to draw at all to being a published graphic memoirist. So that was really cool. Um, what else? So I'm doing my first in-person workshop that I've done. I don't know. I mean, in it like might five be, years, well, five or six years. I'm doing. I mean, to presentations, yes, but an actual workshop. I think it was when we did row. So that was 2013. <laughs> no, yes, no. that was the last time that I really taught. Probably it was before sketchbook school. So eight or nine years, and I'm doing it one time here in Phoenix. 
and it is going to be really fun. And it's it's not expensive. Um, we're doing it in collaboration with our friends at Walter Studios, and it is going to be. I think I think it'll be fun if you've never drawn in the a Walter sketchbook. Hive is a nonprofit organization. They do great work bringing art to people who really need it. And they're our dear friends. And uh, yeah, we're excited to it's be doing an experiment, it. but please come. And yeah. even if you can't uh, attend, you can buy a ticket. I would just say, them. I would just, oh, that's true. But I would just say, just whatever plans you have, cancel them, fly to Phoenix, <laughs> fly to Phoenix. and stay and come in, and you can stay at our house. Yeah, we have a guest room. Yeah. If you don't mind a pug in your bed. True. So that's, that's that workshop. Um, and then if you don't want to do that, you can come the week before and uh, come to our pen and ink wash workshop with Chris Kaler, which I think is going to be awesome as well. And there's information there. It's all this information is in the description below. It's also, I'm going to just run through it at the end. So. I mean, we've done two previous workshops with Chris Kaler. People had their minds blown. He is phenomenal. He is really. He, look, I mean, his work is mind blowing, but he makes, he sets you up for success in a way like, People did just no great other stuff. workshop I think we've ever done where people were like completely flabbergasted at the end. Oh my god, I made this! It, it looks. I mean, the techniques are not hard, and he really breaks it down. So yeah, exactly. please come, please come. Um, Jennifer wants to know what the time of the workshop is. I don't know. It's in the evening. Go, just click on that link. Go to that link. Yeah, I think it's at you five. All, it'll give you all the information. Next time. I mean, honestly, what else? do you have? Something more important to do? <laughs> Cancel it. <laughs> don't. Okay, let's move on. All right. Um, where were we? Uh, yes, I wanted to say, so um, Hanamula has given us, um, how many is it? Five, six Oh my books? gosh, you're going to ask me to multitask here. I think, I think it's, I could have been yes. prepared with this information. Okay, so uh, Hanamula. Okay, we have, is, yeah, four, four. Four zigzag books. And um, the zigzag is a super cool thing. It is a cool thing. And I, I'll talk about it in a second. But uh, if you'd like one for free, uh, tell us that by writing to us at info at sketchbookschool.com, telling us your um, U.S. mailing address. We can only send it to people in the United States because we're sponsored by Hanamula USA. Um, and if you feel like writing to us, there's a post office box. Again, all this information will be down below. So if you don't get it now, it's cool. Um, and also, uh, Windsor Newton is giving away, it is pro markers. Yeah, set yeah. of pro markers, the set coolest. Set of pro markers, watercolors. six markers. Six, yes, they're really... They have a few different colorways, so you have to just... Yes, as I was saying, see what you might get. We're giving away these pro markers, um, they're you know they're they're awesome. They're a luxury item. So uh, if you'd like a free set, please write to us at info at sketchbookschool.com. Tell us why you'd like them, and uh, we will throw you into the hat. Yeah, throw your I name mean, into the hat, right? Windsor Newton, the best in the business. Cool. So um, you know this this is my big zigzag. JJ, you remember this one? Yeah. Yeah, and it has, um, you know, and it it the fire expands truck. to do things like this fire truck. Um, but you know, it's it's what is zigzag is is it's really good watercolor paper, but it's you know, and this is a big one. And then I they sent me a smaller one, which I like too. So this is smaller, right, hand size. But they also sent me this. Come on. And I think this is what I'm going to work in today. It's like the cutest thing that ever did exist. Yeah. So basically. Oh, you're going with the mini? Yeah, I'm going mini. Whoa. So so this is, you know, it's really cool. Look. It's like a little accordion. And you can make basically it's like making one big stretch out drawing. Um, but it's but it's in a beautiful, you know, it's it's nicely bound. And what I'm thinking is today what we're gonna talk about is my favorite topic, food. We're going to talk about food. We're going to talk about food because it's Thanksgiving coming up here in the United States. When is the Canadian Thanksgiving? I think it already happened. It already happened. All right. But honestly, it doesn't really matter. So the point, the point that we're going to do today is we're going to just do some drawing of food, and really, you could think about as food, you can think about as textures, a bunch of drawing challenges, and so. My hands are gigantic, actually. Uh, you too, Sandra. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to give you a picture of an item from a Thanksgiving Feasty. feast. We're going to have it up on screen for two minutes. 
can have at it however you want to. And then we're going to do that a dozen times. So we're going to do 12 drawings of all of Thanksgiving and the fixins. So if you wanted to do, you know, work it all out in one page, you know, you could do hey, like, yeah, just make a collage. You could do the turkey in the middle and then you could do, you know, the stuff around the edges if you wanted to. Um, or you could do it on multiple pages, however you want to. But uh, I think it would be nice. What I like about this as a metaphor is it reminds me of when you have guests over for Thanksgiving. And what do you do? You add the leaf to the table. So this is like a, an opportunity to kind of expand. So, um, um, And as Joe mentioned, it's a turkey tail when you fan it out. Uh-huh. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's a turkey. Oh, because of this. You mean. <laughs> well, no. The tail... <laughs> What does a turkey tail mean? Well, you know, like when you have the ornament. Yes, there you go. Like, like that's that? Yeah, you make the, well, kids make them, and then they put them on the table. Little okay. Cute little, anyway. Or it can stand. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Um, so get your stuff out. I'm going to work in. So I'm thinking I'm going to work in. I'm, I'm going to draw, draw with a big fat pen. So this is uh, an 08 Winter Nude Fine Liner, 08. And then I'm thinking drawing ink. Fun. Haven't done these drawing ink in a while. Yeah. And I have, I have my whole collection here, and I have. Uh oh. Um, Are you gonna make a mess? I might. I might make a mess. I'm what glad I was you thinking. Changed to a darker colored shirt. Is that? So what I'm. Yeah. So I. I have. Pre, I have pre loosened the caps on my bottles of ink. Oh, risky thing to my do. do. I know, not but I only have two minutes for drawing. Okay. So we got to be ready, right? Jeez. Got to be ready. So, is, all right. This is a high wire act. Yeah. And uh, I got a brush and I've got pencils and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll see if they come into play. But I just, I really like these colors. I haven't used them in a while. They're, they're different from watercolor. They're different from watercolor markers. And I'm kind of thinking I might try one color at a time. That's fun. They also like drive that. fairly quickly, so that could be good too. All right, let's get to drawing. I know. So, all right, let's move on. Let's move on, and uh, here we go. There. Okay. Ooh, quick. Oh, yummers. Wait, hold on a second. I want to go back. I got to go back because I'm not quite ready. Do you want me to do something? Do you want me to do the timer? No, I'm I'm all set. Want me just to sit here and hold the dog. All right. So you guys got a glimpse of the turkey. It's coming up. So I'm thinking. Because I was also thinking this might make a nice, what they call, hostess gift. What do you think? Right? Because we were just invited to somebody's house for Thanksgiving. What if I brought them this entire Thanksgiving feast as a little present? I think that's super cute. Right? It could be nice. So I'm going to leave the first page blank. So I could write something there. And I'm going to draw my turkey right here. You all ready? Um, here we go. One, two, what am I sitting here for? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, there we go. It's a good-looking turkey, isn't it? Yummers. Apologies to the vegans. Yeah, if you're a vegan, you can still draw a turkey. You can get tofu or, or, or you can pretend that it's something else. Or if you want to just, I don't know. Just make cauliflower. Roughly the same shape. Cauliflower. Yeah, I mean, turkey is the only time that you ever roast a turkey. Because, let's be honest, it's not that great. There's just something about it that's, you know. I thought you were an American. Well, I'm a, food, I'm a foodie first. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't go to a restaurant and order roast turkey, right? I mean, unless it was Thanksgiving. I mean, in a restaurant, you might expect them to make it well. But, you know, yeah. I mean, I think let's... Just be honest, my mother, the worst cook, and years and years of her Thanksgiving dinners perhaps colored my belief about turkey. <laughs> Not that great. But I do like the whole ritual. I mean, it's certainly fantastic to have it in the oven first thing in the morning, maybe while you're watching the Macy's Parade. And, uh, you know, you've got... The tin foil on top, and you're basting it, and you're you perhaps infused it the night before, gave it a infused it. Well, yeah. I'm. What am I thinking? Uh, not marinate. Mm. 
It is, it is marinated, isn't it? No, what is it when you get the spices, you soak in the spices? Brine. You brine it. You it's brine salt. the turkey. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I think, helps definitely with moisture. Oh, my gosh, Danny, you really have a very little time. I know. Oof. I know. I'm being daring, but foolhardy at the same time. I'm going to come back afterwards. I've allotted a little bit of time to come back in. That's our two minutes, folks. What happens now when you flip the page? That's the beauty of the accordion book. Ooh. Right? Show them. Yeah. Show them. Show them. I can just stretch it out to show the next the page. Beauty. All right, but here we go. Next one. So this is, you know, a little harder to draw, but you could draw it on a plate, I guess, or you could just draw it as little elements. That's what I'm going to draw. So this is stuffing with, I guess it has some cranberries on it. What do you think? I can't see it yet. Yeah. I have lag. <gasps> looks good, though, doesn't it? I have to say, when I, I was I'm pulling so, these photos no, together. I'm sorry, that looks like a dish of Twiggy's vomit. I don't know. When I was pulling these pictures together good. this morning, I was like, you know, damn, I can't wait for this, actually. <laughs> this looks really good. I mean, for me, the minute Halloween is over, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. So Danny was a little like, hey, isn't it too early to be talking about Thanksgiving? This was JJ's idea I, because of like a chance to talk about food. And, yeah, right. <laughs> sorry. I start, I mean, we did get invited to somebody's house this year who will not be named, but is also known for not really being the Yeah, that's best true. Is cook. she catering this thing? I, I don't know. We kind of hedged. We were like, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can come. I know, that's very rude. But that's I am I'm inclined to... Oh, I just put, I just put my brush in my coffee. Order from a restaurant. Oh, no. So does that mean you can't drink this coffee or you just oh, yeah. continue apace? I don't have time anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I only have time to make this really not very good drawing. I'm sorry. I don't, I am not endorsing cranberries in the stuffing. That's a mashup. I'm not, I'm not here for it. Thanksgiving is traditional, but very, with variations. And I think that's fine. Oh, someone just joined from Iran. Fantastic. It's nice. Welcome. You know, I mean, I think every, not everybody, obviously not most people don't celebrate around the world, don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but everybody has some kind of a big feast thing. For sure. So, yeah, so that's cool. Feast of choice. Feast, yes. All right, so that was, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and label all these things. So if you listen, go, what the hell was that? I mean, hodgepodge I of was, dots. People get mad when I criticize your drawings, but. Woof. Right. I know, but you'll see. You'll come back and you'll go. <laughs> That guy's a, that guy, I have, I have no idea how he pulled that thing out of the fire, but that is, that's why the Guggenheim called him. <laughs> Here we go, next one. Taters, like them taters. Maybe I'll just roll one or two taters. I had to edit this down because originally I had mashed potatoes as well. You know? I mean, again, Fingerling potato, a delicious item, but on Thanksgiving, no, it's a masher. You got to put the gravy in the mashers. Mm, I just but, love roast potatoes. Yeah, I, I know. Care. Danny loves roasted potatoes. I think it's my. It's, more this than is my feast. Else. This is my feast. <laughs> roasted so. potatoes and oatmeal. Not Are together. you Irish? I'm the Irish person, and you love these things more than I do. Just saying something. The Irish may have taken credit for roast potatoes, but. Treat. That's true. Everybody loves a roast potato. You know what really perks up a roast potato? Duck fat. Oh yeah, that's good. Mm. Yeah, we used to do that. Used yeah, to there to used to be a place in New York shop. where you could buy the smallest little tub of duck fat, oh, and it was like fourteen dollars. For yeah, but it was great. Oh, it was great. Keep it in the freezer. All right. That, that's, I think that's reasonable. I, I need a little bit of... I do like them to be reasonably well done, so... So someone is asking, doesn't the base ink get smudged? The base ink does not get smudged because it is a Winsor Newton fine liner, which is waterproof. <gasps> Cajun Paul Prudhomme oyster stuffing. Laura, let us know what time to show up. Oysters. No, oyster stuffing is good. I mean, I love oysters. I just, it seems like a waste of them to make them. So. 
Well, I think you use the ones like from the kitchen. And that's it. Taters are done. Ding dong. Man, I really, I almost drank that tea. <laughs> Do you want me to go get you a new one? <laughs> no, I don't. All right, here we go. What do we got next? Mashed potatoes. Okay, covering the bases. Yeah. I appreciate this. Mashed potatoes. Oh, Garrett is asking, will there be a draw with me on Thanksgiving Day itself? And you know what, Garrett? We're going to do it. We did it last year. It was fun. You know, holidays are tough. Even if you're sitting pretty in life, holidays, it's a time for people to come together and support each other. So we wanted to... We wanted to be with, with everyone, our, our nearest and dearest. That means you guys. <laughs> That's sad. No, I, I mean, we loved, we absolutely loved having uh, well, the idea a start to our day last year. I think we've done it on Thanksgiving the last, like, several years. Despite what's happened with the pandemic and all, the idea of traveling on Thanksgiving to go and visit people, oh, my God, Ugh. seems like the worst. Going to the airport and all that madness. Plus, with all the airlines, you know, understaffed, lost luggage, flights canceled, bad weather, oof. Yeah, yeah. we're staying home. We're possibly going to shirk our invitation, order food from a really lovely restaurant here in Phoenix, which is what we did last year. Bust Margie out of the assisted living, bring her over, fill her up full of foods, and... Uh, and then we'll lay around and bellyache and probably watch old movies on Turner Classic. Margie is my mother-in-law. Yes. All right, so this is in a blue bowl for some reason. But, uh, yeah, I was, I don't know what I was thinking, giving us only two minutes to do this. But, you know, it's kind of like a, an express Thanksgiving dinner. Imagine if you could knock out an entire Thanksgiving dinner in just... Two minutes a piece, two minutes per dish. I notice you're shirking the parsley. I just put parsley on. Oh, parsley is the last thing you add. <sighs> okay. I like that big pat o butter. Yeah, that's nice. Yummers and tummers. All right. <sighs> I'm getting nervous because I'm thinking I'm going to have to flip the page and this water and this ink is still wet. But we'll see. Oh, what crawfish happened? cornbread. Oh, geez. Oof, I want go. that. I want that. All right, next picture. Okay, so this is sweet potato. Those of you who are not American, and I understand it because I, until recently, wasn't, wasn't American either, will be horrified by this idea. But basically what these people do is they cook... These people. They cook sweet potato... Or yam, as they all f also call it. No, they're two different things. Yams are different from sweet potatoes? Indeed they are. Okay. So they cook sweet potatoes, and then they layer miniature marshmallows on top of them. I'll admit to you, it's a bit sweet for even my taste, and that's really saying something. Yeah, when we were thinking about this episode, we were originally talking about illustrated recipes. It's not that kind of a show. I know, but I mean, the crawdad cornbread. You just needs... you just want to eat food. I'm, I'm, this is called. It's not called eat with me. <laughs> yeah, <this> is... <laughs> Helen just said no. I'm not including that even in an imaginary meal. <laughs> Somebody uh, brought when we you could get imaginary uh, indigestion when we when we cooked Thanksgiving, which we did when we lived in New York. We were the cookers often, and you True. know there are a lot of people who don't have their family in New York around. So people would come to ours, and somebody brought this, mm. and uh, she happened to be from from Texas, from Dallas, and I think that was the first time I ever I was like, ooh, I've always been curious about that, but uh, let's just say one small scoop is plenty. Yeah, it's it's more the idea than anything else. What is that other thing called? That ambrosia salad. That's actually something I really like. I've never had that. You know what it is, though, Yeah, right? it's jello. Is it jello? Yes. What is that? It's got, okay. like, canned fruit in it, right? It's not a Thanksgiving thing. It shouldn't be for any day oh. of the year, but, yeah. All right, well, we have some people who are enthusiastic about that dish regardless. Um, okay, so here's another one. This is this is a, a 
<laughs> I like polenta pot just said there will be polenta. <laughs> it's very meta. So this is, um, you know, I, I, I think people, there are people who believe that you have to have macaroni and cheese on Thanksgiving. And that it's almost like a choice between that and uh, mashed potatoes. Is that possible? No, it's you have both. That's just for the carb loving fool who can't. It's make you know. It's like Sophie's choice picking which carbs you have. All but that's the thing about big feast things is, you know, the people who are like not eating everything are just missing the point, right? I don't know. I mean, I'm. I don't think I'm really here for mac and cheese on all. However, yesterday when I was just trying to do a little research on whether we should shirk the invite that we got in order from a restaurant i did notice this fantastic barbecue place does smoked turkey and one of the sides was mac and cheese i was like Meh. and they also had fingerling potatoes and not mashed so they were they were rejected for these reasons but that smoked turkey oof, so good. um so this is more of a challenging thing to draw it's a little abstract. I mean, mac and cheese is a like distinct shade of yellow, not found in nature, and not found in my Winsor Newton drawing ink set either. Well, I'll just keep adding orange. There we go. I was gonna say, couldn't you come? I'm getting there. I'm getting it. It's called mixing. <laughs> it's not called combining. Just to give you, she's not an artist. I don't know what those that looks are. Like. Those it kind of looks like a plate of like. Severed fingers. Severed fingers. Ew. Okay, let's take a, a miniature break. Ah, I like a little taste of drink. Olives. It does look like olives. You're right. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm just going to wait for one second to let this slightly dry, or at least that side of it. But I guess I can go to the other end of this. Um, book and go yeah okay so so far we've got this whole thing worked out cute and now i'm going to turn it over and start working on the back um and the thing is this to me is just an excuse to do a little bit of lettering so i'll do some lettering um later on and just like describe what these things actually are Probably, I'm, it's only 9.30, okay. I was going to say, you're cruising through these. I know, I feel like I'm rushing, but I'm going to go back to this, and um, I'm going to go back to it. Yeah, Monica makes a good point, which is how monotone, monotone of Thanksgiving foods. Yeah, it's true. I, well, I had cranberry, a salad. that's why you have a pop of color. I know, I had a salad in there at one point. I took it out because I was like, you know, if you have a salad at Thanksgiving, nobody eats it because he wants to eat salad on Thanksgiving. You no, know, Jen has pointed out, Green bean casserole with turkey fried onions. I took out the green beans. <gasps> I took out the green beans. Sacre bleu. I know. Fredo, Fredo, first of all, welcome back. <laughs> why not three minutes? You know. You were done wrong, my friend. Why? I'm sorry. Why? why ask but why? Fredo, um, three minutes because then we would run out of time. I get in trouble when this show goes for more than four hours. We'll probably. We'll probably bring it in just under four today. I'm joking. I need, I need this show to end on time because I'm going to pick up my friend from the airport who's flown in from New York. It's true. And uh, We're doing this for JJ, cold, so let's get on with it. Let's yeah. get on with it. Here we go. What do we got next? So roast vegetables. Yummy. What do you think? So I'm just going to draw like some some Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts? I see pecans. So that looks like Brussels carotis, pecans. Yeah. And oh, there's probably some onion in there. It looks like there's a lot of carbonization. Uh, yeah, caramelization. Caramelization, right. Carbonization is. There's some they're, carbonization they're, too. They're totally they're burnt. busted. They're burnt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm a lot of a lot of um this kind of food illustration is really about just drawing kind of amorphous shapes, coloring them kind of yellowish brown, and then writing next to them what they are. 
Nobody, did... I don't know if anybody caught that as a joke. It's like zing. <laughs> that's why I'm. That's why I'm not a food illustrator professionally. Yeah, I mean, is this mac and cheese? Who knew? Well, it's going to have a few different colors in it, so that will tell you what it is or isn't. It's a bouquet of roses. Could be a bouquet of roses. Yeah, top right. down view. All right, I'll swim back into the tea again. Yeah, this is the first kind of hit of color that we've had. Get that greenies, oranges. Oranges. Scarlet. Oops. Whoa. What happened? That red was a bit of a surprise. It's not sure what happened there. I think this is a top down view of the Thanksgiving centerpiece of the bouquet of roses. Again, I will explain it all in my caption. Mm -hmm. This is not a... I think Thanksgiving feasts are sort of good cooking, but not necessarily, right? Well, because you start drinking. You start drinking. <laughs> you end up... I like, mean, and also, not, it's like nothing comes out at the same time, at the right yeah, time. I mean, so it's all who, different You have one temperatures. stove. Yeah. So got... similarly, the drawing shouldn't be too good. <laughs> because it's, in, it's, in, it's consistent with the whole experience. Well, we've got Brussels sprouts ready, so I'm going to skip this one. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right, All right so, so do you know what I like to do with this situation? And a few people have mentioned they like the thing in the can, which, no, absolutely, just say no. Um, the vast majority of people in the world are not going to make their own cranberry sauce. What are you talking it's about? It's so easy. Literally, it's the easiest thing to you go, make. Go, you get a can opener, you, you can, open the can. <laughs> you cannot mess this up, but so in... Here in Arizona, we like to put a little chopped up jalapeno into, it's kind of like, have you ever had a spicy margarita? It gives spicy margarita, and it's like, gives a little zing, to, like when you add a little touch of it to everything else on your plate. Like if the turkey's dry, and you put jalapeno cranberry sauce on it, zing, it's good. It does sound kind of good. I think it is a Southwestern thing. Though. I mean, is there anything that jalapeno doesn't make better? Well, it's too spicy for many Cheerios. People. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to put a little. This is actually kind of easier because it was all one color, all one shape. You're not going to put the, uh, the orange. orange zest? No, because I'm already getting some. Zest bleeding. is one of our favorite words here in this getting house. Some bleeding. It's already. a word we use often for Just Twiglet's behavior. She's very zesty today, not usually in a good way. All right, so I had to go and um, you're into use, these use blue the bowls. It's like your your well, like I want to add some color. grandmother's some color china was blue, right? I want to add some color besides um, besides just yeah, orange get, and get red. Get the green jalapeno flecks in there. Yeah, I can't though because this <laughs> this one has carrot on it. Where no, it? I think it's orange zest. Oh, orange zest, yes. Okay. Oh, and Corinne, validating. She makes her own cranberry uh -huh. sauce with so fresh berries There are orange. beans. Okay, so this is just kind of stand-in for beans because I just didn't feel like drawing another casserole. So let's just draw some beans. No dirty fried onions? No, this is just beans. Beans, the magical fruit. Um, these are just string beans. How do you make and them? What's with... up with that chop chop? That's a ludicrous thing to do. Well, this is, this is I think they're cleaning the ends. Oh, right, right. <laughs> so what do you do with green beans in a casserole? Again, like you put cheese or some crap. No. So what is it then? Cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> Why is that allowed, but cranberry <laughs> sauce from a can is not? Uh, some things are just, uh, you know, personal preference. It's cream not. of mushroom soup with those dirty fried... So those dirty fried onions leave like a real layer of... What is dirty? Grease mean? on the it's the brand name, mm -hmm. and they grease up the top of your mouth. It's kind of like the same. It's like a Pringle. What kind of a company would name itself Durky? It's a combination of turkey and dorky, neither of which is good. <laughs> Durky. I do believe it's probably somebody's last name. Hopefully, well, you don't have to name. I mean, if your name is Durky, you could say, you know what, we're going to call it. It's Durky. Outstanding 
It's derky with two E's at the end, not like turkey derky. Yeah. Oh, that makes it much better. <clears throat> I think they've been around like a <laughs> long time. <sighs> this It sounds like a Southwestern thing. I don't think so. Really? I think that's a Midwestern thing. Oh, really? My whole family's from Detroit, so a lot of these food recipe... I mean, this my mother, again, a horrible so cook, today. but yeah, cream of mushroom soup was an essential ingredient. This is the best drawing I've done so far today. There's something about the beans that inspired me. Maybe it's their complex shape. And the first healthy thing. True. Janice Skilly wants bacon on hers. Yeah, so does Anna. Dried onions. I'm starting to feel, I'm starting to feel a little bloated. Here we go. Oh, uh, yes. Legit, right? Back to carbs. For a second, when I glanced over, I thought it was like a roasted scallop, and that also looked really good. <laughs> so hung- I'm okay, so, so hungry. So, I mean, are biscuits like this? Um, this is what Americans call biscuits. I mean, that's a gorgeous-looking biscuit. Yeah. It's got the layers of, uh, what's it called? Foy, um, the um, en croute. Yeah, what's it called when you have those laminations? Laminations. Ah, uh, yep. Laminations. We've been watching a fair amount of the politically incorrect British baking show. And that should surprise no one that we watch this show. We only watch it to learn the terminology. Yeah, H- Helen is saying a biscuit. So, yeah. in America. This, is, what this America, is a biscuit. This is what Americans call a biscuit. I know, it took me a long time to get used to it all, so. They're so tasty, you will forgive them anything. Like a proper homemade biscuit. Mm. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom. Birdie, nom, nom. I do feel like a biscuit. That Yours really is starting to look like a stack of pancakes. I think that you are more likely to use like a dinner roll. You know why? Because that's the essential ingredient for the midnight sandwich. That's true. And, and also, but you, you can't not... sop up gravy with a biscuit. No. I mean, I think in the, if you're in the southern states, a biscuit is probably essential. But I think for me, for my Thanksgiving, I, I want it to be like a Parker roll. Parker, pa- house, Parker roll. house roll, yeah. We actually had a friend who worked at the Parker House. The husband of one of our sketchbook school instructors. That's true. And probably one of the coolest humans I've ever met. <laughs> All right, we're not going there right now. We're going to gravy. Gravy in the boat. Because honestly, just a drawing of gravy by itself without the boat, probably not that much fun. <laughs> it would be like another bowl of Twiglet's barf. I mean, the whole purpose of the Thanksgiving meal is a gravy delivery vehicle. Like, you can't just take gravy into your mouth with a spoon. So you've got to have all of these somewhat bland foods that you give a little zest with gravy. My gravy boat is a little lacking, but... Because you never really are supposed to use the pouring thing when you do gravy, right? Mm, I think you know, we thought, I mean, mess. no. We use the pouring thing. You mean you t- meant to have a little mini ladle? Yeah. We're not fancy that way. We're just like slop it on. I don't really have the bright gravy color. If anybody from Windsor Newton is watching today, I would urge you to come out with um, dogs barf uh, color. Come out with gravy, ink. Co- gravy colored <laughs> drawing ink. That color that you just use is exactly spot on. Thank you. It actually looks a little, a little intense. Yes, we call it a gravy boat. Yeah, it's a little red. 
Excuse like having me. me like a little tomato soup we don't, in there. We don't criticize drawing here. I'm sorry. I thought you were looking for my input. I, I know. Oh my gosh, we have another person who's come from India. First time. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. I just love it when we see people from Here's the most important the part. Very fun for us. Here's the most important part. I gotta, I gotta check my friend's flight again. AJ, this is one of your favorite parts. Oh my gosh, her plane landed. Uh oh. Oh, I looked away. You know, I have to say my favorite part is probably the champers. Did you do it? It's a traditional part of Thanksgiving. And it is for me. Do the pilgrims have champers? Well, they certainly didn't have Cabernet Sauvignon. They probably had wine, though. Didn't they? Mm. It's part of the sacrament. Yeah, they probably had beer. This is obviously a red wine. Vano. Vano. Oh, I have this color handy. I'm going to tart up this <laughs> gravy terrain a bit. Um, Whoa. There we go. I can take a breath, actually. The wine has fortified me. Vino, poco de vino, and uh, boom. I think we are almost at the end of the meal. Come on, there's got to be dessert. <laughs> there's got to be dessert. Don't even, oh, don't play with Really? Do you, what do you think? We had a dinner party the other night, and all of our slender friends eschewed dessert. <laughs> but they were like, the couples were like, well, we'll split one. And then they each like... Creme brulee. It. We were serving creme brulee. And we were like, we eat dessert <laughs> literally every night. As you can tell by our... I, look, life is for the living. You we eat in the by our Live through a pandemic. Portly. I don't care anymore. Demeanor. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a... Yeah, you this give is yourself a pumpkin, sort of a huh? hard pie to draw. Well, I wanted to make it more interesting than just a, a circle of brown done that already so this is sort of uh i guess it's a pumpkin pie and it is has these kind of woven bits of dough on it it's called lattice 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 uh, i mean that's very martha stewart lattice prey um yeah it has this kind of woven bit too but, um, well, that's the lattice. No, the the um, braided, plaited, yeah. So, add some further embellishments. Ooh, I forgot about my paint, cola. Somebody's commenting on the giant Costco pies, which, funnily enough, somebody, a realtor who sold my mom's house, gave us a giant Costco pie, and we didn't get to it in time, and it mildewed. Oh. Disturb disturbing. Was it, a was it pumpkin? I think so, yeah. I, I have to say, I, I like pumpkin pie okay, but pecan pie is... Why is choose? It? Like Why choose? Have both. Have them both. Yeah. Remember last year we had... Oh my gosh. We had so apple last year, pie, pecan pie? No, we had uh, pecan pie for sure. We had pumpkin pie. But then we had dark chocolate with like Mexican chili spices as a tart. And then a lemon tart that had thyme. You don't mind if I continue working while you're reminiscing about. I can't remember what the third by, one but... was. It was something excellent, though. Okay, so so this is pumpkin pie. So I'm going to try and see if I can 
this camera makes it look like this is not nearly as difficult as it is. Twiglet's really like licking her chops. I think she's finally onto the fact that we've been talking nonstop about foodies. So would, is apple pie considered traditional too? It's pumpkin or pecan, but what else would you say? Mm. Should I put apple in there? No. no. And then um, wine, is, is, would you say wine is, is a typical part of it? Absolutely. And should it be red? It doesn't matter. Just all the wines. That's the title, all the wines. Because you know, everybody's got their opinion about the favorite wine. All right, so there we go, all the wines. And then we've got some gravy. Me, I am a champers girl. Boy, do I, I like know, we're not, We've already talked about that, though, so let's move on to <laughs> other topics like gravy. Anything you want to say about gravy? Gravy boat. I think boat is a cute word. Whoa. What? Your pen went a little, your nib went wild. Nib's going wild. That's what we look for. Um, so the, then we're going to say um, biscuit or roll. Oh, this puggy. So tired. So tired. Biscuit. Stack of pancakes? You want me to draw attention to the fact that I didn't do a very good drawing? Do you think that's a good idea? Sorry. Because if we acknowledge that I'm not very good at drawing, where would we be? All right, green beans. And some of the things that we talked about adding to this is bacon. Cream, what else do people cream say? and mushroom soup and dirty fried onions. Dirty. D U is it D U R K E E. I think. Dirty. What was it? Dirty. Fried onions. Fried onions. I think I'm leaving out the cream mushroom soup. So this is cranberry. And what about jelly versus salt sauce? How about cranberry your way? Now I'm going to write sauce or gel, gel, jelly. It was called cranberry jelly? Yeah, cran sauce. Then this is roast roast veg. I feel this is. I'm working so small. I feel like one of those guys who like, um, you know, makes those miniature things with like magnifying glasses and, you know, like. Uh, like out of matchstick it. heads. Yeah, exactly. Or like carving a grain of rice. Have you ever seen that? Right. Now the big moment when I flip it over. <clears throat> Terrifying. All right, this turkey is looking very unpleasant. Uh, <laughs> it tastes. I, I'm definitely looks have, as bad as it tastes. Definitely gonna have to do some work on this later on. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna zhuzh it up a bit.
What do we say about roast turkey? Brined. I managed to scrub some of this. Some of this wet ink was not happy being flipped this quickly. See, there's ink on the table now. Get that off later. All right. Now we come to the really the high water part of this whole thing, where I have an entire table covered with open bottles of ink. Oh no. Brine. So we, brine. What else do we say about it? Brine. Um, what about deep fried? Yeah, meh. Gimmick. Smoked. Smoked. All right. And then we have, um, what was this stuffing? I don't know. It was like a dog's breakfast. Dogs eat stuffing for breakfast sometimes. It's still wigging me out. There are cranberries in that stuffing. You call it stuffing or dressing, so I I believe the uh, I believe the um, difference is stuffing is when you cook it inside of the bird and potentially gives the whole crude E. coli, and dressing is when you make it in a pan outside of. No, oh, I didn't know that was the difference. I believe that is the case. You know, they really say making it in the bird is. Is bad. It's not the height of. Isn't that the whole point? No, I think it's a. That's an old timey thing that now it's fast train to food poisoning. Next stop, botulism. Well, botulism is from that can of cranberry sauce. It sat on the shelf since like 1962. Um, what was that? What is that? Uh, what do we call this? The um, pumpkin? Is it sweet potato? What is it called that has the marshmallows on it? Um, casserole. It's a sweet potato casserole. I'd be afraid to spell the word casserole on camera. I think I would screw that up. Oh my goodness. My friend has not only landed, she's already claimed her baggage. Oh, Lordy. Friends? All right, I'm doing the last one. What's the last one? Uh, mac and cheese. Oh, dear. All right, Twiglet, you're free. Be free. All right, mac and cheese. Okay. <laughs> I'm terrified to turn this over, but... <laughs> I have one, one, one horrible thing happened. One horrible thing happened. How bad? Can it, can it be redeemed? Everything can be fixed. But this. <laughs> not good. So that's the, that's, that's the. That's the carbonization. Yeah. I can f probably figure out some way to fix that. But yeah. Mm. So. I told you that biscuit was. It was. It's like when somebody gets a bad tattoo and they black out their arm. That's what you're gonna have to do with that biscuit. All right, so yes, so this is a little <laughs> mangled. It's a little mangled, <laughs> but I can fix it. I can fix it. I swear I can. Good lord. All right, that was overly ambitious, but there's nothing wrong with being overly ambitious now and then, right? <sighs> I feel like I just ran ate a marathon. Ran, ran a marathon while eating an entire Thanksgiving meal, but I'm okay. Okay. All right. Let's so do it you again. have to go. Let's we, do this we, again we, next week. Yeah, we've <laughs> got to do it next week. Uh, I've got to wrap it up because we uh, have to go and get our friend at the airport. So, um, yes. God, look at all those things we had to talk about. So, just to remind you about uh, Chris's workshop on the twelfth, my workshop on the seventeenth. Just come to both of them. Don't you don't have to choose. Um, if you'd like to have your own, I don't think they're going to give you a little tiny uh, zigzag, but they'll give you something cool as will Windsor and Newton. So write to us if you'd like one, either, or both, or neither, at info at sketchbooktool.com, Americans only, American mailing addresses only. If you live in, I don't know, 
some other country and you have a mailing address here, fine. I want to see your Thanksgiving dinners, however you put them together. <laughs> so share them on, sketch, on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, or on the schoolyard at Sketchbook School and tag them, hashtag SBS Draw With Me. Don't forget the podcast next Monday. Got a humdinger coming up there. And uh, my weekly essay, dannysessays.com. It's the hot stuff. Thank you for um, for being here. JJ, thank you for coming back. And uh, Twiglet, we have to go now and get our friend. This has been a lot of fun. We will see you. Will you stop monkeying around? <laughs> Never. Bye, guys. Have a great week.